So we can probably all agree that Akatami is really good at doing many things. However, one that I feel like he's great at achieving is putting his characters in really rough positions, back against the wall, overcoming such a tremendous hurdle. So much so that you question your understanding of their character, you question the altercation itself, and it really makes you think if the character you love is going to get out alive. Even though you've seen them at their best and potentially their worst, the fight that they are going into is questionable. For me, Akatami does this brilliantly, and he always has a way to circumnavigate your expectation. You would think it's going to go in this direction, or maybe even you hope, but something else entirely ends up happening, and you really just can't comfortably put your thumb on who is going to win out of this altercation. Sometimes he even likes to take this a step further and make you really love and appreciate the character they're actually versing, and a prime example of this is Kashima versus Akari. We knew Hakari was strong, very powerful, one to rival Yuta and Gojo even, yet the character he went up against Kashimo, we too knew he was a problem, but never to the extent of what was actually portrayed, and we ended up really enjoying his character and the fight that was actually produced between both of them. It was a life or death situation, and it was incredible. The reason I talk about this is because currently we are witnessing the exact same thing, but in a different position of the Carlin games. Theoretically, if I were to frame it as its construction, we are within the ending of phase one. Basically, we have built up every character in succession to show off their power, and usually that show off of power has been one-upping the previous fight in some way, shape, or form. Originally, I thought Hakari would be the end of it, and then we would transition into the next phase, which seemed somewhat appropriate at the time. However, now Maki has come into the picture, who has already had a very early showcasing of her strength, and it was incredible. The Zenin family massacre was a phenomenal small arc, and one that I wholeheartedly appreciate and does a lot to elevate her character to such an incredible length. But we're getting more, and we're going back and channeling into that greatness that Akatami loves to do in making this entire situation very unpredictable. I think it's safe to say that we were all very confident in Maki's abilities, especially what she's shown us. She is the next stage of human evolution, someone that will rival Toji within the future and has an incredible arsenal of ways to adapt to situations. She quite literally is being called a monster and an anomaly at the exact same time, and having that within the culling games with everything that we have witnessed is very valuable. Those words may not seem like much, just dialogue to pass us through to describe a character, but with everything that we have witnessed, calling someone a monster, calling them an anomaly, someone that is unpredictable or unprecedented is a very powerful tool. And you may have not realized yourself how it has retroactively lifted your expectation up for Maki. I'm telling you, Akatami does this brilliantly, something that he weaves into his story, his characters, pretty much within plain sight, but if you're not looking for it, you probably won't expect it. So we go into this Maki versus Naoya situation, as well as Noritoshi Kamo, and we have our backs against the wall. This is kind of the first time we're seeing such a powerful, vengeful spirit, one that's very closely connected to Maki, obviously, and the true fear and strength that it's actually able to provide. I love this, and I love that it's happening right now. There's a couple of really great ways that this altercation, for me, functions within the Culling Games, because it's not necessarily being used as a typical battle similar to Megami's situation, or Yuji's, or Hikari's, or even Yuta's, but instead it's a point of learning. It's a showcase of power, most definitely, but one that isn't going to exponentially cascade over Hikari and Kashimo's fight, or even Yuta's fight, for example. It may be one that could technically equal out to it, to some extent, but for the most part, I think this is meant to show off just how terrifying Vengeful Spirits can be, and how obnoxious they can become, as we start to understand more about them, which with this new set of knowledge, uh, we can actually play upon it again within the future for other Vengeful Spirits that potentially want to get played upon or at least some sort of variation of it. It's a great way to supply us information while also escalating the entire situation. Again, pretty brilliant. But two, it's also playing into Maki's strengths, showing us how far she can go and what really is going to push her over the edge while also creating a gauge or some sort of comparison between Maki, someone that is very close to the top tier I'd imagine of power, and Noritoshi Kamo, someone that isn't most likely going to develop past a level of expectation that is somewhat needed to function within the culling games properly. Thirdly, and it's kind of more of a pseudo one, this is our first group altercation, getting us comfortable with multiple characters within one fight and having them interact or work with one another in a successful manner. I assume we will see more of this within the future. If fights get more and more powerful, just following that train of climatic tension and escalation, theoretically we have to overshadow everything that has come prior. So the more 
more powerful we become, the bigger the fights are going to be. But yeah, we've already maxed out nearly every single character. So how do we make that work now? Well, we have big group fights. We combine the power together so it works out more evenly. Plus, Akatami has purposefully left out certain abilities and certain things we haven't seen from people. Yuta, for example, with his domain expansion, as well as Hikari. There's some odd stuff there that both characters haven't shown their full deathly end-all end-all abilities. Really fighting out knowing that they're going to die but to save someone else type of thing. You know what I mean? All of this might sound really weird and all over the place but it's currently being channeled through this Maki and Naoya fight. So on the surface it's a great fight that's entertaining but we're also learning, we're also channeling the direction of the culling games and at the same time we're gauging power. We're learning where these characters sit and how far and few everyone is between one another. Maki is kind of our last pillar. We need to know where she stands and how far she's willing to go, what activates her, what triggers her into that next stage because we've seen how ferocious she can be but we know that there is a lot more there. Yet it's still so unpredictable. Maki's back is still against the wall. This isn't going to be a wash for her. It's going to be difficult and we need to see that trigger. In my mind currently there's a couple of things that could make this work. Kamo for example. I think he's going to struggle quite a bit but he's more of a ranged fighter if anything. So the biggest problem with Kamo is that as much as he has a bit of power there to most likely be an annoyance to Naoya, the speed that Naoya will obtain is going to be very very quick. So that distance becomes almost irrelevant and if Naoya wants to tunnel Kamo to any extent just to get rid of him, he's most likely going to die pretty quickly. Maki would have to play in the back foot then. She'd have to play defensive, she'd have to learn how to play around other people that are significantly weaker than her. This is a great point of learning, especially when we've seen how proficient she is on her own, being able to adapt to group fighting situations while excelling within herself and her strength and understanding her own identity even more. Do you see how this is all cultivating and growing into such a beautiful situation? The Magi and Naoya thing is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just the icing on the cake, really. A fight that we are experiencing again, but at a much higher level. So if Kamo gets severely injured, potentially even dies, or Magi having to go on the back foot to defend Kamo or at least protect him to some extent, we still don't know the true nature of Maki's sword. And this is going to be probably the biggest thing I assume that becomes a reliance for her. Definitely not in a bad way, but in a way that is going to be probably the biggest crux of her power and what makes her extremely difficult to actually deal with. We don't know what her sword is capable of. We don't know its true or full capability. So you can imagine if and most likely when Maki gets knocked down pretty roughly by Naoya and it's going to be a monstrous showcase of her prowess. Knowing how Akatami likes to handle these situations, it's probably only going to be a slice. A very small showcase of what that sword's potential really is and how Maki can ultimately utilize it in such an incredible way. Maki getting beat down or having a rough time I think is a great thing because it lowers our expectation retroactively that she's still learning, that she's still growing, but that she also has to take into consideration the people surrounding her, like Noritoshi. She cannot just fight on her own and as much as it seems like emotionally and mentally that's where she would thrive perfectly, every fight that's going to come after this is most likely going to be a pretty big group fight unless it has some sort of emotional fueling or vulnerability behind it. The bigger these fights get, the bigger the group fight has to be, the more Maki has to learn to adapt to her surroundings and the people beside her that are fundamentally weaker or around her strength. But it also does a lovely job on showing just how crazy vengeful spirits can actually be and for us to finally learn about somewhat of the fundamentals of how they function and how they evolve and what they transform into. How much power can actually be pulled out from them and how it capitalizes on the base person's abilities. Naya was extremely quick beforehand. His ability was kind of broken in that regard and he utilized it to the fullest. Now that's going to be extrapolated even further so he gets only quicker and quicker where it's almost impossible to most likely deal with him. This is a very valuable showcase of a vengeful spirit, of Maki, of power gauging and basically a great setup and transition into the next opening phase of the culling games, how it transitions over time. You've probably noticed a little bit more dialogue than usual when it comes to Kenjaku, for example. We're seeing a little bit more of him and his motives and everything along those lines. So that's getting drip fed to us through these slower moments. And that's not to undermine this moment overall, but to enhance it to show us just how far this culling game has to transition into bigger ulterior things. At the end of the day, I don't know the outcome of this fight. 
great. And that is what Akatami is incredibly great at doing. Taking characters that we know are very powerful and putting their back against the wall and wholeheartedly giving them a tough time. It makes you sit on the edge of your seat. It makes you question yourself and that is an incredible talent to have. And he's proven time and time again that he's able to do it efficiently, effectively and seamlessly. Fight after fight, altercation after altercation. I love this showcase of Naoya. Very excited to see this upscale for Maki and hopefully Noritoshi Kamo can come out on top of it alive. I don't see him expanding his abilities tenfold into something out of this world but if he's able to live, if he's able to aid or help or support Maki in a really great way, we could get a wonderful uh, gauging of where these power sits and how far everyone is from one another. Fingers crossed for their safety. I'm excited to see what this fight boils up into and how the ending will most likely catch us off guard as usual. But whatever happens, it will be a tremendous fight nonetheless. With that, however, I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Drink plenty of water and I will see you within the next one. Goodbye.